Saki mwemwe na kwa le mchele kwa kukuku mwaga Sako na wapenda ya tusema nitasikia Hi, my name is Kat Albrecht and I am a computational social scientist and I study fear. So before we talk about exactly what that means and exactly what I do, I want to tell you how I got here. So there are lots of ways to discover your passions. Like say you might know what they are already. You might have known from the beginning. That's awesome. Um, and some people know what career they want. Like say you want to become a doctor or a lawyer. However, there are some people who don't know, and I am definitely one of the people who did not know exactly what I was passionate about for a long time. So what I did know is that I wanted to go to university. I really enjoyed going to school, and I was good at school, and I knew that that was an avenue for me to figure out what I wanted to do and to kind of have the life that I wanted. And the other thing I knew is what I like and what I don't like. And my favorite thing in the whole world is scary movies. And that seems silly, right? Like, what does that mean in terms of finding your passion? Sure, we all like to watch movies. But for me, scary movies take on this place of importance in my childhood, where a lot of my best memories are sneaking out to watch horror movies late at night and doodling pictures from shark movies in my notebooks at school and things like that. And so when I went to university, I was trying to figure out how do I take something that I know I love, like horror movies, and use that to find the type of career and the type of passion that I want to find. So I had three goals when I was at university. First was to figure out why am I interested in horror movies? What is it about horror movies that makes them so fascinating to me? And second, how can you translate whatever that is into a career? And third, what do I have to do to get a career like that? So this sounds really good in practice, right? But how you actually do it is a whole nother thing. So how I really got started is when I was at university, I discovered academic research. And I was absolutely shocked because what I found out is that there are people who get paid as a career just to figure stuff out. And that's exactly what I wanted, was to figure out why something as seemingly innocuous as a horror movie was so interesting to me. So when I went through university, I got more and more involved in opportunities for doing research. Not every kind of finding of your passion happens overnight. Instead, it was over years of being involved with different research projects and working with different people. And I found out that a lot of those people who had these projects that I loved so much were college professors. And I found out to become a college professor in the United States, you usually need a PhD. So I made my goal at that point to have a career in figuring things out. So after I got my bachelor's degree, I decided to continue on to graduate school. And when a lot of people explain their journey, it sounds so smart and so cohesive. And you're like, how am I supposed to emulate that? because I don't know the answers, and neither did I. <laughs> I applied to graduate school, and I didn't know a lot about it. Um, I definitely made some mistakes, but I did um, get into graduate school, and when I got there, I learned a very important lesson, that it is never too late to learn a major skill. So up until that point, all the research that I did was you know, reading books and doing interviews and those types of things, but I realized what I really wanted to be doing was kind of computer science and computer coding, but I didn't know how to do that. But what I found out is it was not too late. So I got into a PhD program and I didn't know how to code at all. And I learned it in graduate school. And in doing so, I made so many mistakes. But the wonderful thing about school is it is an opportunity to make mistakes because sometimes you get a lot out of being successful, but other times you get a lot out of 
failure as well. And if you want to talk about making mistakes in computer coding, feel free to reach out because I have a lot of stories for you. <laughs> so while I was in graduate school, I learned how to code and this really had a profound or deep impact on the type of work that I was doing. And I was getting closer and closer to the type of work I wanted to do, but there was one piece missing. And as I was exploring my research, I kept getting frustrated. And what was I frustrated by, you ask? I was frustrated by the law. And I didn't understand exactly how the law worked or how systems of law worked. And that was holding me back in my research. So in order to improve my research and improve my work, I also went to law school. Uh, and going to law school is an interesting thing. Uh, if any of you are considering law school, definitely reach out. I have stories about that too. Um, and law school is a really interesting place. And what law school did give me was an understanding of the structures and systems of law that undergird the research that I'm doing. So what you're listening to here is kind of a winding journey, but it's a journey to an end. After all of this, going to university, going to graduate school, going to law school, I finally answered my most pressing question. I finally figured out why I love horror movies. And that's because at the core, I'm passionate about understanding what makes people afraid. And all the work I've done so far has been in pursuit of building the skills to understand that question. And so today I'm finishing my JD PhD I do data science consulting for law firms and tech companies. I teach classes at Northwestern University and I get to study fear. So the point I'm at in my career now is I get to orchestrate these kind of computational science experiments um, online and in person to understand what people think about fear and how different institutions in society like say the media influence what people are afraid of. And my argument is that in understanding what people are afraid of, we can unlock some of the mysteries of society and why things are the way they are. And the most likely career avenue for someone like me who's really interested in this kind of research question is becoming a professor, becoming a scientist in a think tank or a lab, or working in big data technology. So I'm still on the pathway to my eventual career goal, and I'm hoping to become a college professor, and I am getting closer and closer to that goal every day. And I wanna leave you with a, a takeaway here, and that's that if you don't quite know yet what your passion is, don't worry, you'll find it. And school and your life experiences and things that you love, those are great places to look. And so if you want to talk more about data, about research, about the sociology of fear, or even about going to graduate school or law school, definitely feel free to reach out. You can find me at my website, which is www.catalbrecht.org. And be careful, because there is another Cat Albrecht. And that other Cat Albrecht is a pet detective. Yes, you heard that right. Her career is finding missing pets. So if you log on to my website and you find that it is in fact um, a middle-aged woman with a bloodhound, that's not me. Look for the lip piercings and make sure you have catalbrecht.org. Thank you for letting me speak to you today and good luck. <laughs> Nani paga moyo ni kesa kulia chuse na futia.